was born in the palace with maids and all the people around. But he ended up going to Lodibar at five years old. That was terrible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Something he did not know maybe was that in God's plan, his father, Jonathan, was a good friend of David, the following king. And they had a covenant, a very strong covenant, that if something happens to me, you will look after my family. You have to understand that in this time, um, Israel was attacked by everyone around. Remember Goliath and all the Philistines and stuff. So you needed to be really strong. And David and Jonathan, those are the people who are going to the battle. So that's the reason they said, okay, if something happens to me, there was an expectation that something may happen because we go fight. These people are fighting us all the time. We have to defend ourselves, but we can lose our life too. If I die, you are going to look after my family. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, that was in God's plan. At five years old, Mephibosheth knew nothing. The king, David, could have forgotten about him, and then he wouldn't even know anything. Hallelujah. But when you are in God's plan, regardless of where you are, God will take care of you. Amen. God calls David to remember the covenant he had with Jonathan. And because of that, he went to Lord Bar to look for Mephibosheth and bring him home. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of John Chapter 10, verse 10, 9, 29 says, My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Brothers and sisters, when you read the Bible, it applies to you right there. I know some of you spend the night in Lord Bar. I know. I know after the service, some will drive there. I know you're going through stuff. One ear is listening to me, the other one is in Lord Bar already. Because something is not going right with you. What you are hoping is not what you're getting. Your child is sick, your mom is sick, you just lost a cousin. There are plenty of reasons to be in Lord Bar, to be very depressed, to be a, in a place of dryness, to be in a place of nothing is growing. Your business is now moving forward because Lord Bar has knocked at your door. But I am saying, regardless of where you are right now, God has a plan for you. And then he has done it for Mephibosheth, he will do it for you. Amen. Mephibosheth, his father had a covenant with uh, uh, David. But you have a greater covenant because Jesus Christ sacrificed himself. He shed his blood at the cross for you. That's the great covenant that we have. Yeah. Hallelujah. You can tap into that. You can make that yours. Because if you're here, you belong to that covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know last time when I shared my, a little bit of my story, I saw people were feeling sorry for me and stuff. Do not be sorry for me. Hallelujah. That was also God's plan. Hallelujah. I know I was born in Congo as a refugee. I know I was persecuted. I know I saw death. I touched death. I put my leg there and then I put it back. I know all of that. But guess what? All of that was so that one day I will be able to be here. Stand bold and say a word that someone may have listened, someone may have been touched when I opened my mouth. You can bring a lot of preachers, talented, and we do have some here. They may say the same exact thing that I'm saying, but it won't touch you. It won't get to you. Sometimes God will use me, will use you, will use another person to get to your heart. What I went through, I don't care. Absolutely, I don't. It trained me. It gave me some muscles, as you can tell, so that I can be able to stand here and to battle Amen. so that the word that God gave, put in my heart 
gets to your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I know you believe it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I am in God's plan. Amen. Amen. Psalm 91, verse 7 says, Thousands may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. Yes, I was in living in danger. Less people were killed just around me. Sometimes it was my turn, but danger spiritually was miles away from me. Physically, I was right in it. I was shaking like, like a chicken, thinking they are going to kill me now. It's my turn. Hallelujah. I'm now going to go back to that maybe one day. Amen? Amen? I'm trying to tell you what you see with your own eyes has nothing to do Hallelujah. of what your spiritual eyes Amen. should be able to see. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thousands will fall, but danger will not even come near you. So for those who are in low bar, let me tell you, danger is not even near you. Uh, Satan can do whatever they want to do, but the word of God is stronger to stop them over there. So I'm asking you this morning, open your spiritual eyes, okay? And then you will see that all the the dryness around you, actually, it's not even dryness. That's the picture that the devil sometimes shows you. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things may not go well with you today. You are not receiving what you are hoping. You are not getting what you are hoping. Your kids are not turning into what you expected. The answer to your prayer is not what you are receiving. You have been praying, but nothing is coming. Let me tell you again. You are in God's plan. You just don't know. Maybe we should pray, God, give me a hint of what is coming. Because what I'm seeing right now is not looking like what I want. Hallelujah. I pray that God reveals to you a little bit what he has for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 28 says, I gave them eternal life, and they should never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, 10, verse 30 says, But even the hair of your head are all numbered. So this morning I'm here to say, fear not. Even your hair, the number of your hair is known by God who created you. Yes, you're going through stuff. Yes, you do know how you can remove yourself from this situation. But do not worry. There is an end. We were singing here that troubles come at night, but joy comes in the morning. So I pray for that joy to manifest now. I pray for an end of your night now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is merciful and God loves you. You are elected by God. God chose you, handpicked you. Hallelujah. Do not worry. Hallelujah. Do not worry. Today, I am going to go back, this time to the first book of Samuel, chapter 16. And if you loved my accent last time, I'm going to read again. Hallelujah. I recommend you follow over there. (laughs) First book of Samuel, chapter 16. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him? as king over over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. This is God talking, sending his prophet Samuel. But Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel 
did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? He said, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord I'm, said to Samuel, I'm Siri, your do virtual not consider assistant. consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by. And Samuel said, no, has the Lord chosen this one either? Jesse had seven of his sons passed before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? And Jesse said, there is still the youngest. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Hallelujah. Amen. So he went for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn and oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came awfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Brothers and sisters, I like explaining this history quickly. As I said last time, Saul was the first king of Israel. Israel, the Lord never chose Saul to be king. Never called Saul to be king, but Saul was elected among the people to be king. Because once the children of Israel got to the promised land, they wanted to behave like the people around them because the Philistines had their kings and whatever. So they wanted to have a king as well. So they said, no, Lord, I'm Siri. You're yes, you are our I'm king, Siri. we need a your virtual assistant. we can see and touch. Uh, we want to be like everyone else. And then the Lord said, okay, I don't understand you guys. If that's what you want, to pay taxes and whatever, so let it be. You choose your own king. By acclamation, they chose a king. You understand how Saul became the first king of Israel? But he was not a person that God chose. He got to the point where he was messing up, and God said, no. I am going to find my own person who will be a king. And he sent the prophet Samuel to the house of Jesse. That's where the story is. Hallelujah. Amen. When people elected Saul to be a king, they just found someone who was strong, good-looking, someone who could defend the country. Like other kings, someone who looked like other kings. When you see your president and the president of another country, you compare them, you say, yeah, we have a good one. So it was according to them, not according to God. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we live a world of physical appearance. Everything is about how you look like. We judge people, we determine everything based on what we see. And the Lord this morning is saying, I do not care much about how you look because I go inside and I look at your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In this world, in order to fit, 
you have to be tall, you have to be good looking, and look like others. If you don't look like others, they tend to reject you. If you don't think and talk like other people, they look at you bizarre. A couple of weeks ago, I was in South Africa, and then I was driving with my, my cousin's family. And then I hear them saying things. Uh, they speak English. And then I say, OK, I don't understand this robot thing you're talking about. In South Africa, the traffic light is called robot. Yeah, so that was bizarre. And then they were talking about jumping the robot, which is um, wh when you don't stop at the stoplight, when you don't respect the stoplight, when you pass through the, the red light. They say, you jump the robot. Uh, it may make sense to them, but it did not make sense to me. I have never heard that before. Right? I have never jumped any robot before. <laughs> Amen. So, and then we started talking, and then they found me bizarre, and I found them bizarre. At some point, they said, oh, we need gas. Let's go to the garage. I said, okay, pardon me? Yes, because they buy gas at the garage. That's how they call the gas station. So, in your way to the garage, because you need gas, you may jump the robot which does not make any sense to me. And then I am bizarre. And I remember the, um, my niece saying, OK, why can't you just say the robot like everyone else? <laughs> and then I said, OK, guess what? Everyone else does not say robot. It's only you guys. So that's the world we live in. You identify yourself based on something that people agreed, this is good, this is beautiful. Brothers and sisters, in some places, and I'm not joking, uh, fat, being fat, is being beautiful. Being fat is being beautiful. I saw on TV, in some cultures, they force the young um, girls to drink a lot of milk, to eat a lot, so they become fat. Because when you're fat, the more fat you are, uh -huh, that, that's, you, you'll attract some guys who are not necessarily fat. Hallelujah. <laughs> they will torture th these young girls. I remember they will pull this finger here. The more they pull, the more you feel the pain, and the more you eat. I saw that on TV. It's real. Hallelujah. So the more you're fat, the more you're beautiful. And, 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 th and this is true. A serious study in North America determined that 90% of people that were interviewed would like to change their look. Uh-huh. 90% here, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I know. Uh -huh. You want to look like me? OK? <laughs> but I want to look like you, too. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's just crazy. That's the way it is. So coming back to um, the, 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 no, not a lot about today. <laughs> Let's go back to the first book of Samuel and talk about the house of Jesse. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we understand that Samuel that God sent Samuel to go to the house of Jesse to find a king, a king according to him, not according to people anymore. When he got to the house of Jesse, Jesse had many kids. He had eight, well, seven brothers and even two sisters. And then he brought them there, one by one by one by one. Even Samuel, the person who was talking on behalf of God, when he saw the eldest, he said, this is it. This is the one. Because he was tall, he was really strong and good looking. He looked like a king. Brothers and sisters, for those of you 
who are not tall, who are not strong, and who are not good looking. Do not worry. Do not worry. Uh -huh. This is a choice of man. Our choice, where we qualify, it's God's choice. Hallelujah. The guy brought all the guys, all the men, except one. Maybe he was not that good looking. Probably he was not strong. And actually, he was not even considered as a man. He was right there in the forest somewhere to look for the sheep. Brothers and sisters, that is the person that God wanted. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the prophet said, we are not going to sit until you bring this boy here. That means there is nothing I'm going to do. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to sleep. If it takes you two days to go bring him here, you are going to. And you guys, you stay here until he comes. Brothers and sisters, people will reject you. But if you are the chosen one, one day all of them, they will bow before you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So do not worry if you, do, you don't qualify really. Yes. Do not worry if you're not tall enough. Yeah. Do not worry if you're not fat enough. Yes. Hey, fat, tall, small, white, black. Yes. He created them. Yes. All of them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I would like to say today, what matters the most for God is your heart. Yes. I am saying what matters for God is not your butt, is not your whatever muscles, is your heart. Yes. Open your heart and put it inside. You may not have what your neighbor has, but what matters for God is not back there or up here. It is your heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> God looks the inside, not the outside. The Pharisees, if you remember, they were following all the rules, everything. Especially the day they had to fast, my goodness, everyone had to know that brother is fasting. He will sit there in front of everyone with a very bad look. He cannot swallow. He was spitting everything because people must know he was fasting he was not supposed to eat. But they were wicked. They, they didn't have a good heart. Jesus said to them, you look good on the outside, but in the inside, you are not looking good. Some of us today, you probably look good outside, but you are ugly inside. Uh -huh. Me including. Uh -huh. We have to understand that. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us, if you go to a different part of the, the world, they will look at you and say, where are you coming from? Don't you eat in Canada? You know, because you need to be fat. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> when Jesus chose the 12 disciples, amen? amen. Do, do you think he had a list of the, the, the people that, who were smart, the people who had achievements, he did not go for that. He was seeing things people did not see. When he called the tax collector, people said, Hey, eh? how come a tax collector is taking all our money? Why are you doing that? He, he went to look for fishermen who had a very bad language, but he was seeing inside. He even called Thomas, who sold him, and who was doubting everything, and I mean, who was doubting everything. He called the guy who sold him. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? God look at inside. So you and me, who probably don't qualify according to people's rules and stuff, we have a chance. Thank you, Jesus, we have a chance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
God does not really care how you look like. You may come from a dysfunctional family. You may have had a terrible life like Mephibosheth. I mean, terrible. You may have been even a cheerer of a dishonest person. All of that has no significance at all. God is not interested in that. He's interested in something called your heart. What is inside of you? Because you are here, I can say that he handpicked you. Hallelujah. There are many places you will be or your friends are at this moment while you are here. So he handpicked you regardless of who you are and what you have achieved in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God sees your heart and he knows that your heart is turned toward him. You may probably not know that, but I'm going to repeat. You are here because you, are, you, are, you were handpicked. He handpicked you because your heart is turned toward him, not toward the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I know some of us need some adjustments. And so maybe some improvements. Do not worry about that. God will take care of that. Yeah. Hallelujah. God loves you, and then he will make sure he, he tunes all the things that need to be, and all the crooked places, he will make them straight. Do not worry about that. You come the way you are. It's just your heart that has to be turned toward him. So today is the day I'm going to ask you to accept yourself. Yeah, the way you are. Hey, we're all in a, in, a, in a process. We're changing. It's a process. And then from some of you who think I have arrived, I'm living glory, don't worry. It goes from glory to glory to glory anyways. Hallelujah. Another point that I would like to underline today, God notices someone who is overlooked. Among all the sons of uh, Brother Jesse, one was overlooked, was left in the dark somewhere there. No one wanted to talk to him. He was not considered a man. But that's the person that later on, God will say, this is a great king, the King David a man according to my heart. And that person was overlooked by people. In the eyes of men, you may have been overlooked, but in the eyes of God, you are not. Amen. Hallelujah. God has an incredible, incredible plan for you. Amen. I am saying God has an incredible yes. plan for you. Amen. He had one when he said, go to the house of Jesse. Brothers and sisters, Jesse was nobody. He was not even rich. If your son has to go take care of the sheep, <laughs> that means you don't have people that could work for you and then go take care of the sheep. Am I right? So this guy was poor. And I can guess he did not have so many because you cannot look after 1,000, 2,000 of them. Am I right? So he had just a few. So let's conclude that Jesse was poor. Jesse has done nothing. Jesse was nobody. It is in the house of nobody that he found a person who was overlooked. And then that's the person he said, this is the one. This is the one that I choose. Brothers and sisters, I don't know where you're coming from. I just told you Quickly, things I went through in order to be here and be the one talking to you. Maybe some point in, in my life I was overlooked. And I know I was. Maybe that's your case as well. No one considered you. You did not have the height that other people normally have. People disqualified you because you were too tall or too short, too dark or too white. People disregarded you. Even at work, they can't even think that you will be the one leading them. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. But God went to the house of Jesse, and nobody, unknown person, to look for a person who even Jesse himself did not think he could present. Or, so he was not even proud of David. Eh? Because if the... the, the the, the prophet is coming to anoint, to anoint people, and then you're bringing the best of the best that you have. 
Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, keep your heart turned toward God. Amen. He is the one who commands everything. Amen. Remember what uh, Samuel said. We are not going to sit until this guy comes. Uh -huh. Let people overlook you. Hallelujah. Amen. David was, was just a shepherd. Nothing else. He was probably not attractive. He was not extraordinary. He was not holy. He was certainly not tall. Remember Goliath and David. Mm -hmm. Goliath and David comes out after all of these. Hallelujah. Even at that time, he was not that tall yet. Probably he was not wise. He was ignored by everyone. Ignored by everyone, including his own dad. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Lord said, do not consider the appearance. There is something greater in you than what I can see with my own eyes. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. The most important is not how we look outside. It's how we look inside. So today I'm asking everyone, uh, when you say hi to a person, try to imagine how they look inside, not outside. Hallelujah. I know some of us spend a lot of money to fix the outside. A lot. One day a person is slim like me, the, the second day, pew. <laughs> what happened? We spend a lot of money trying to fix this, to fix that. We neglect what is the most important. As I said, it is the heart, not something else. Some people become even tall. How that happened? Don't spend too much money trying to fix the outside. Because God does not even care about the outside. Hallelujah. <laughs> your internal is more important than your external. Uh -huh. <laughs> Read the word. Grow in the word. Because that is going to fix your inside. Hallelujah. If your inside is aligned perfectly with him, he will use you. Hallelujah. We're coming to my title. Do you have another son? There was a reason, brothers and sisters, that David was absent from the house. There was a reason he was overlooked. There was a reason he was not prepared. Yes, he prepared everyone, but he did not prepare him. He was overlooked by his own family. He was not good. Not you, not good. Go back to, to the sheep over there. Hallelujah. As I said before, even the prophet was wrong. Verse 6, the, when the prophet saw the first son of Jesse, he said, surely the Lord anointed this one here. <laughs> but you are wrong. Traditionally, as the first son, the first boy, that becomes... Uh, that will inherit the, the power. Hallelujah. So traditionally, it will be the oldest who is the strongest, the smartest, the most intelligent, the most capable, the most qualified. Just traditionally. So if you are now the first one like David, you have zero chance. Because you are now the oldest, you are now the most qualified, you are now the strongest. You have zero chance. Especially if all you do is look after the sheep. But despite the fact that David has zero chance, God chose him. Hallelujah. When Jesse brought his seven sons, even the prophet was mistaken, but God was not. Hallelujah. You may have zero chance, brothers and sisters, in the eyes of people but not in God's eyes. So today I'm saying to those people who think they have zero chance. You think it's not you, it will never be you, it cannot possibly be you. I am saying God will choose you anyways. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I remember a, pla a place that I work. I am probably the one who has the most broken English. But nevertheless, I am the boss. I have people who were born here, raised here, who dream and laugh in a language I still struggle with. But nevertheless, God chose me to lead the team. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is hope for you too. There is, I am saying something to provoke something in you too. Hallelujah. When you are sending your resume, you have to use your heart. Do not look at the mirror because what the mirror is showing you that's probably not much what the resume is looking for. Hallelujah. Let God direct you. Talk to God and say, God, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, you have great plan for me to succeed. My, my desire matches your plans right now. Is this job for me? Let God decide. Let God bring the, somewhere to the house of Jesse. Don't run before Jesse comes. Let Jesse get there. Let, let Samuel get there. Let Samuel get confused because they will bring other people they think are qualified. But the one who has the fun will say, isn't he God? I'm, I'm asking you, isn't he God? So in your research of work, in everything you're doing, let God be the one who has a final say. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is hope for you. Hallelujah. Today, I want you to stop dismissing yourself. To stop counting yourself out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When they ask all the strong and the beautiful, I come too. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. If they say, where are you going? Tell them, brother, don't look at the outside. Look at the inside. Uh -huh. Because in the inside, there was a king called King David, the greatest king in the history. But the people did not see that they saw a child who could not do anything. Brothers and sisters, I will continue to preach on, on David because I feel there is something for you in there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I am very serious and I'm provoking people because people that I know limit themselves. They think, no, this is not for me. No, I, I think I cannot work there. I think I cannot do it. Oh, my goodness. Should I prophesy this morning? Yes. At your work, God will choose you. Amen. God will cause them Amen. to choose you. Amen. God will cause them to love you. Yes. In your business, God will cause people to go to you, Amen. to trust your product, to bring their money to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, you will call it a miracle. I can't believe we saw this much. I can't believe all these people. God is causing them to come to you because God chose you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, all the people are struggling. All oh, my kids, my, your kids will do extraordinary. Hallelujah extraordinary. God will cause them to do extraordinary. You just do what is ordinary with your heart turned toward him and let him do the extraordinary in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And all the, 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 the people who are still single, I know some of you are here. Hallelujah. God will cause. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Do not worry. When we say your heart has to be turned toward God, it's God who chooses. It's God who will bring this fiancé who could not see with their own eyes. He will cause them to see you, to notice you, to love you, and to propose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we all heard the testimony of Apostle. I know he doesn't talk too much about himself. So let other people talk about him. He told us he was born in a village without running water, without electricity. He was raised by a stepfather who physically abused him, kicking him out any time he wanted while he was a small boy. Hallelujah. Remember all of that. He may not have electricity or running water in his childhood house, right? 
He may not have shoes. May not, maybe never played a Nintendo when he was a small child. Maybe did not, not even have a TV. Okay, no car, nothing. But God said, I choose you. Yes. Regardless of all of that, I choose you. Amen. You may not be the child who was equipped to be, to be a pastor, to be a dad in your family, to be an apostle, even to be an ambassador. But God said, you are not equipped, I will equip you. Amen. You are the one I am calling. So do not worry if God calls you. Do not worry. God calls you, God will equip you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Before apostle asked me to preach here, I could not do that. I could not stand here. I will probably be shaking, spending time controlling myself so that I don't shake. <laughs> but brothers and sisters, there is nothing that can cause me to shake. Amen. If God say, sends me here, I will send here. He will give me a word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that word will touch you. And that word will change you. Amen. And that word will transform you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So don't worry. The day God says you, you just go. Do not worry. Do not look at people because people will look at you. You'll have the impression, oh my God, we have 5,000 people here. Do not worry about that. There is probably two or three that that day you will touch. And then you have to focus on what God wants you to say. Because the message may not be for everyone else. It might be just for one or two. If you do not do what you have to do, you're going to miss it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know time is flying, so let's stand up as we're closing. I'm asking the people, you can close your eyes if you want. If you're here and you say, I do not have your education, you stand. If you're here, you say, I am not capable, you stand. I don't have what it takes, you stand. I probably don't have the look, you stand. So I pray that God chooses you among many, despite what you lack. You lack education, I pray that God chooses you today. You don't have the look, I pray that God chooses you today. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray for all the congregation members. I say, dear Lord, I'm praying for my sister and my brother. It is time to choose them now. Every time I hear about marriage, it is another person who is picked, Lord. Every time I hear about a child who is born, it's the other person actually who is pregnant, not the person who is praying for Today, I pray that you choose them. Every time I hear about blessings, dear Lord, is another person who is blessed, not the person we're praying for. Today, I am praying that you choose them. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, it's your turn now. It's your turn. The same way that God anointed Samuel to go to the house of Jesse and find a king, the same way, he anointed me to stand here and to talk on his behalf, to be an extension of his hand. So I use my authority today in the name of Jesus. I exercise my anointing. Oh, hallelujah. I am praying for my brother and my sister, and I revive your dreams. I revive your hopes. I revive all your best dreams. Hallelujah. I proclaim abundance in your house. I proclaim healing in your house, hallelujah. I prophesy that God is about to bless you. God is about to bless you, my sister. God is about to bless you, my brother. God is about to take you places you have never been before, things you have never experienced before. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that God gives you the desire of your heart. Hallelujah. People will continue to say, you do not qualify. Let them talk. Hallelujah. People will say you don't have the education. Let them talk. People may say you are from the wrong nationality. Let them talk. I silence all the negativity and I proclaim you are anointed. You are chosen. Receive your blessings today. Receive your blessings in the name of the Jesus. Receive your blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to close 
by reading Psalm 6, 24 to 26. And this is a blessing you're going to take home. The Lord bless you and keep you, protect you, sustain you, guard you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you with favor. May the Lord be gracious to you, surround you with loving kindness. May the Lord lift you up, lift up his countenance, his face upon you with divine approval and give you peace and give you tranquility in your heart and in your life. May the Lord bless you today. Hallelujah. How many of you received? (laughs) Hallelujah. I pray today that you are now driving back to Lord Bar. I kill that GPS that keeps bringing you back to Lord Bar. Today, it will bring you to a different destination. Amen. A place where there is a Lord Bar, you have dryness. Here, you don't have dryness. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Everything flourishes. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray for abundance in your life. I pray that everything you touch change into gold, hallelujah. Start dreaming. Dream, hallelujah. And dream big, hallelujah. I don't care what you dream about. Some are dreaming about money, but some are dreaming about kids, fiancés. Good job. Dream. Keep your heart. Turn to the Lord, and the Lord will choose you. Hallelujah. Have a fantastic Sunday. Amen. Amen.